Dear guests, good morning to all of you. Namaste. We have gathered here today morning for the inauguration ceremony of the Rahul Bajaj Technology Innovation Center. On behalf of IIT Bombay, I extend a very warm welcome to all the guests. Our chief guest for the function, Dr. R. A. Mashelkar sir has arrived. Some very esteemed members of the Bajaj family have traveled a long distance to join us today. I take this opportunity to welcome all of you once again, sir. I request our chief guest, Dr. Mashelkar, Sri Neeraj Bajaj ji, and our director, Professor Subhashish Chaudhary, to kindly join us on the dais. I now request our Director, Professor Subhashish Chaudhary, to kindly introduce the Chief Guest and address the audience. Good morning, Dr. Maselkar, Mr. Neeraj Bajaj, other members of the distinguished Bajaj family who have, are here today. Professor Ashok Mishra, the past director of IIT Bombay. That's my colleagues, students, and other guests here. On behalf of IIT Bombay and on my personal behalf, I welcome you all to this August gathering where we see the, I think, the entire luminaries of the Indian auto industry and related others. The name, which is, I think, synonymous, that is the Bajaj family. We have done so well, particularly in this particular sector, that this is like Bajaj, whether it's a Bajaj scooter or anything, it's always the Bajaj family that comes to the mind of us. Okay, we grew up as a kid, and I remember that when I joined uh, IIT Kharagpur as a student, and my father was wondering what happened after the, I graduate, then that time I may need a transport. So he said, look, if I, in your first year, if I book a scooter for you, okay, by the time you are in the final year, you will get it. So actually, I remember uh, putting in a State Bank of India that counter, putting some money, 
And then finally, when I realized that I have to go abroad for studies, then I had to withdraw the money. So I missed an opportunity. Probably my number would have been very close. Okay. So with that in mind, I think it's a great honor for the Institute to be here today on a specific day, okay, 10th of June, which is actually the birth anniversary of late Sri Rahul Bajaj ji, who has been a kind of a, served as a father figure for this institute for over three years, during the time when he was our chairman of the Board of Governors, and he helped us in achieving the dreams that IIT Bombay is always aspiring in terms of a specific sentence or something to, that has been coined, which is that IIT Bombay's tryst with excellence. And this is where I think we leveraged the vision of let Rahul Bajaji to see that what IIT Bombay is today and where we can go till further. His contribution to IIT Bombay is like something that we still remember. Okay, I was of course much younger and not even that time in any of the administrative positions that time. Uh, probably I was head of electrical for some time, okay, if I remember correctly. And during the time 2003 to uh, 2006, okay, what the path he envisioned, today we see that we are a part of Institute of Eminence, which we, IIT Bombay has recognized. And we are like 172 globally in the QS ranking, which was published, I think, there before yesterday, as well as, I think, number 65 in engineering te and technology area globally. So that's actually something, the outcome that we see for visions like a person of that kind of stature. We ha he had to make a lot of, you know, critical decisions that time, but his business acumen, okay, his ingenuity, inventiveness, and the ahead of time thinking that led us to, you know, where we are today. He actually even suggested uh, quite a bit of administrative reforms, which was carried out under the, for that time, the directorship of Professor Mishra, and then new positions of Dean of Faculty, Dean of Alumni, and the Dean International Relations, okay, were created under his leadership. And I was occupying the Dean of International Relationship for some time, okay, after it was established. In addition, IIT Bombay established Umesh Masruwala Innovation Cell, and one more thing which is very important, and the building that we are going to be inaugurated today, that will be housing, is signed. That is Society for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. That happened during his tenure here. So today I am happy to say that the seed that was planted those days, okay, today has taken up well. That was the first incubation, you know, academic incubation in India. And today the collective valuation of all the companies which have acted which have been incubated there, and they have raised capital. They're valued as around $2.5 billion over. And one of them is actually an unicorn. So <laughs> apart from that, I also find that the, you know, this is something of a more of historical thing for me, but I think Professor Mishra is here. He can tell you more from his own personal experience and uh, how he handled a person of his stature uh, during his tenure as the director, but centers like the CRNTS was established during his time, and the place, very place we are here today, the meeting, this particular one, this BMCC, was actually conceived and the construction started during that time. So thank you, the entire Bajaj family, that today you have come here to see that where the institute today, you would be happy to see that what 
your favorite person in your family has helped us and how we are still leveraging it. We are also happy to have our chief guest, none other than Dr. Maselkar, somebody who doesn't need any introduction, neither to the Bajaj family, and of course definitely not to a science and technology institute like us. He is, his, I remember I think the first time I met him was when he, it was in Bigan Vabon, when he handed me over the, uh, the Bhatnagar Prize that was during his tenure. And since then, it has been always a pleasure to have interacted with him. And IIT Bombay, he has been connected in many different ways. And sir, we are delighted that you have taken your time to be here with us and have, you know, we'll be looking forward to your word of wisdom. Now, as regards the purpose of this meeting today, we are going to inaugurate this new building, Rahul Bajaj Technology Innovation Center. In short, I think people have already started calling it RBTIC, okay, the overall. And it is located in probably one of the most prime areas of the campus, just right across this particular building. And it will be housing the three of our very important entities in the campus. That is the SIGN, the Society for the Innovation and Entrepreneurship, which actually had the, you know, the privilege of the guidance from let Sri Rahul Bajajji. We also have IDC. They will also be part of this. And then, of course, the IRCC, which we normally call as the Dean R&D's office. So they will be moving into this building. It's a huge building. It's with a lot of facilities, a lot of open space, and very nicely designed, thanks to the architect and the entire construction team there that today we are able to come. We, we were a little slow because of the pandemic. Certain things slowed us down, but it's be late, a little bit late is okay as long as it is done properly. And hopefully we'll, building will help us tremendously in our efforts to do this uh, incubation, education in design, as well as the research and other activities. In summary, I must say that IIT Bombay is thankful to let Sri Rahul Bajaj for his wonderful gesture, his philanthropy, which got us this particular building. And I am sure that will immortalize the name that is associated with the industry, a person of his stature. And we will be expectantly looking forward to a proper use of this. And with that, I welcome again all of you to this August gathering and particularly the entire Rahul Bajaj family. Thank you so much for joining today. Thank you, sir. I now request our former director and mentor, Professor Ashok Mishra, sir, to please say a few words. Distinguished members of the family of Mr. Rahul Bajaj, Dr. Raghunath Mashelkar, Professor Subhashi Chaudhary, distinguished guests, faculty, staff, and students of IIT Bombay. It's indeed an honor for me to be, have been invited to this inauguration function of the Rahul Bajaj Technology and Innovation Center. I must begin by saying that today, we are missing the towering personality of Rahul Ji amongst us. I came to know <coughs> Mr. Rahul Bajaj in 2003 when he took over as the chairman, Board of Governors of IIT Bombay. 
in my early interactions, he used to often tell me that he doesn't know that much about education, and in particular, not that much about IIT Bombay. Very soon, I realized that he had done his homework thoroughly, and he knew much more than he would let on in the beginning. So I had to be on my toes all the time because I knew that he would know uh, if I <laughs> pulled a fast one, which I normally didn't, obviously. <laughs> um, he was an absolutely outstanding chairman with his progressive and visionary approach and out of the box thinking, we could take a lot of bold steps at IIT Bombay to take it to greater heights towards its quest for excellence and towards making it into a world-class institution. Many times he would say, are you doing this? Is this world-class? And then, of course, we had to prove that we were, uh, or convince him that this was what was needed. Another thing which he helped us with was to deal with the ministry and the IT Council. Several initiatives which were pending, he could fight on our behalf and get them organized. One of them being that IITs could hire Indians with a CIO card um, uh, of Indian origin who were foreign nationals, which was not allowed earlier. He had a passion for technology, innovation, and entrepreneurship. As all of you know, his whole life he lived that vision. And at the same time, we were looking for establishing a technology incubator. So we put up a proposal, as uh, Savishish mentioned, for the Society for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, now called, in short for Stein. And he gave his invaluable inputs to fine tune it so that we can make it a great proposal. We took it to the IIT Bombay Advisory Council. And at that time, Mr. Mukesh Ambani was a member, and he gave his invaluable inputs um, uh, to it. And the final proposal was ready, approved by the board in first shot. And in 2005, SIGN became the technology incubator, a reality, and very soon established itself as one of the leading incubators in uh, educational institutions, especially technical institutions. His tenure finished in three years, but those three years, he absolutely kept us, and especially me, uh, on my toes with uh, things to do. He, his acumen for numbers and finances were amazing. And when he looked at the board agenda and the finance committee agenda, he would point out the mistakes and where we could make those corrections and make the system a little more improved, which we did as we moved along. He left in 2006, however, I kept in touch with him. He was that kind of a person, and he became a mentor to me and gave me personal advice, which I asked for, and in fact, like an elder brother to me. Uh, a year later, I received a call from him that he would like to make a sizable donation. In fact, he made two donations, one for the chairs, which we will not talk about, and so she has mentioned, but this one was for a project dealing with innovation and the like. So we discussed at our end, and we came up with the proposal to make a center for technology uh, innovation on campus. In a private conversation, I requested that uh, we be allowed to keep his, uh, add his name to the technology center. He was very reluctant at first, but we discussed that at length. And since there were lots of buildings, Kanwal Reiki or Mashruwala uh, and, and the like, and Shailesh Method. He said, okay, I, since other buildings are named, I, I agree to that. And that is where the journey of uh, Rahul Bajaj Technology and Innovation Center began. And as Sovashish mentioned, we picked the prime location for it to be established, we got all the approvals from the Board of Governors for the demolition of the old, somewhat dilapidated buildings and where it would come up, and that's where it has come up now. I left in 2008, and there were some delays in finalizing the proposals and so on. I won't go into those. But um, in 2008, um, uh, I was fortunate to be on campus along with Rahulji for the groundbreaking ceremony of this building. And a beautiful building has come up, which you will see uh, very soon. Um, uh, as we know, Dr. Raghunath Mashelkar is, is uh, going to inaugurate the building. He himself has a, a great passion for innovation, and not only for 
uh, the thing about for the country to how youngsters should take the country forward through innovation and startups and, and the like. So we couldn't have thought of a better person to inaugurate this building. I'm really thankful to the Bajaj family to have come in such a large number to give support to the legacy of uh, Rahul ji. Uh, the Technology and Incubation Center will be his legacy on campus. And I am absolutely sure, as the director said, that we will live up to his expectations and make a difference in innovation, entrepreneurship, technology development, technology transfer, whatever you want to call it, in, in the country. Um, I must, uh, 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 I would like to end by thanking uh, Rahul ji for his generosity, for his, uh, 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 for his support, and for all that he did for IIT Bombay to make it a greater institution than he than when he uh, uh, took over as the chairman. Uh, we are very, very thankful to him for that. And I am personally thankful to him for having guided me through my directorship. And as I, if I may put it, make me a better person and a better director. My salutations to Rahul Ji. Thank you very much, Professor Mishra. May I now request our Associate Dean R&D, Professor Upendra Bhandarkar, to kindly join us on the dais. It is indeed a great honor for me to uh, represent the Dean R&D's office, or IRCC as it is generally known here. And we'll be one of the three occupants of this building which has come out due to the generous uh, donation of our ex-BOG chairman. And uh, on this occasion, we would like to release a book of some of the best technologies that have come out. And it is hopefully going to represent the kind of innovation that we have seen at IIT Bombay. So this book was actually made as a part of uh, the 75th anniversary of independence. And uh, it has around 100 and, or just more than 100 technologies listed. Most of these technologies are patented, or at least the patents have been filed, and in many cases the patents have been granted. And they have a very high TRL level. The technologies encompass AI ML, robotics, 5G technology, renewable energy, sustainability, smart cities, robotics, and advanced manufacturing. So. It's just my short job to ensure that this book gets released at the hands of the chief guest as well as the Bajaj family. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Bhandarkar. May I now request uh, Dean IPS, Professor Tom Matthew, to kindly join us on the dais. Sir will make a brief presentation about the building. Uh, respected uh, dais, uh, guests and colleagues, um, I am privileged to give a, a short uh, a presentation, eight minutes presentation and a two minute video or the building that we are going to inaugurate. And uh, yeah, this is our uh, campus satellite view. And uh, if you would like to have the precise location. And uh, so this is our uh, campus plan, and uh, uh, which we have about 489 acres of land and 19.79 uh, lakh square meter of the area, out of which uh, academic area uh, residential area, hostel area have this much, uh, two point, about 2.5 lakh square meter area. 
Now in this, uh, this green shades is where the uh, hostel zone is there. And these uh, blue ones are where mostly our uh, residential area. And the red one, which is our uh, academic area. And uh, these are various buildings, as we have been highlighted by our director. So this Arbitech is right in the heart of our uh, academic zone. And uh, so this is the architectural view of uh, this uh, building. And some of the salient features uh, architects are Somaya and Kalapa. The project management consultant was uh, Central PWD. Um, this contractor is Parnika. The total built up area of this uh, project is around 22,000 uh, square meters. The footprint is ar around 2,500 uh, square meters. The project's cost, uh, the building cost is uh, 70 crores, which is now completed. Uh, the work has started uh, in 2018. And uh, as been highlighted, this building is going to be used by SIGN, IRCC, and IDC. Now, the uh, architectural philosophy of this building, according to our architects, uh, so this building is planned by amalgamating the functions of their volumetric components with large voids, as you would be seeing later. So these voids in the building uh, continues to the upper floors, resulting in a stack effect. And a large atrium space on the north sides provide diffused light within the interiors and visually connect the spaces. And the sign and IRCC blocks are connected through bridges at uh, uh, certain levels. The service courts have been designed on the south and the west facades to shield the interiors from solar radiation and heat uh, throughout the day. Uh, elements like exposed staircase, external voids, and lowers have been designed to impart an industrial look and express the functions of the building of the exteriors. Uh, the building has a certain breakout space throughout, which it's, it's a quite a sizable, around 700 square meters of breakout space is there. And the total built up area is uh, 22,000. As you have been highlighted, this building is going to be used by Industrial Design Center. And uh, they have academic office, research, communication, design, interaction design, animation and mobility, and vehicle design labs going to be there. And uh, they'll be occupying ab about uh, 4,000 square meters of area. And uh, Industrial Research and Consultant Center, they have mainly uh, conference rooms, office cabins, uh, dinner and office, et cetera. They'll also be occupying about 4,500 square meter. And the sign, the Society of uh, Innovation and Internship, an arm of IITB, for fostering entrepreneurship and nurturing the startups. Uh, this consists of laboratories, office space, and incubation. They will be occupying a major chunk of this space, which is around 6,000 square meters. Uh, so this is the layout of the building. And uh, the red one, what you see, is the main road. And uh, we are just, uh, right now, we are sitting just opposite to this building in VMCC. And the blue dots are the, the circulation area around the uh, uh, building. So there is uh, all, th all the four sides, we have full access. And the first three sides have the uh, fire access also. Um, so this one. Uh, this one is our main entrance uh, to the building. And uh, so this is how all the uh, floor plans are there, ground to the seventh floor. And uh, these color codes are basically for various uh, users like IDC, IRCC, SIGN, and IATB. Um, now, uh, as I've been highlighted, now this for floor plan C, the amount of voids uh, in the building that will help natural ventilation and lighting. So that is thanks to our architects for considering this aspect. And uh, the, another hallmark of this building is the, um, as you see this shaded area, this shows the connections and interactive spaces. There is a lot of, in all floors, there is a lot of breakout spaces uh, that will promote interactions. So finally, this is the uh, various views of the uh, building. And uh, just for the nostalgia of this one, these are some of the photographs how this building has evolved over the uh, construction period. Um, and uh, yeah, I think this photograph speaks for itself. And this is another view of uh, during the construction phase. And I think now this is the view. Uh, it's almost completed, uh, these photographs. And I wanted to. Uh, highlight uh, the team who has worked behind this, uh, Somaya Kalapa, uh, led by uh, Brinda Madam, 
I think she's there somewhere. Okay, yeah, thanks. And for the whole team, uh, they have been very helpful in this one. And this complete project was uh, uh, handled by Central CPWD, led by the chief engineer, uh, Sri Mathusa. Okay, he's also somewhere here, actually. And it was constructed by uh, Parnika, uh, led by their uh, president, Lalit Prakash. And he is almost every week, he is be visiting uh, the campus. I just want to close uh, with a two-minute video walkthrough of uh, this building, which now you are going to see that. Uh, um, so this is the main uh, view from the entrance. And uh, uh, so we'll be entering now uh, through this area where we'll be doing this inauguration and uh, plaque and so on. The building uh, occupied by sign, IRCC and IDC. And uh, this is a uh, view from the main building. That is, as we are entering this from the main building view. Right now, this uh, building, all the uh, civil construction, uh, MEP, electrical, all these works have been completed. And we'll be inaugurating in a month's time. The building will be handed over to uh, the users, sign, IRCC, and IDC, who will be doing the interiors and office spaces, etc., and then occupying the building another three to six months' time. So hopefully within three to six months, the complete building. So this is the central uh, void, the atrium view, uh, which is going through the whole building. Yeah, this is a very interesting feature of the building where we'll be going now, which is the fourth floor, cafeteria area. Of course, the furnitures are not there now, only the area is available. The view from IDC side. I really uh, want to, uh, I'm not thanking all the people who work behind from the IAT side, uh, except to thank my predecessor, uh, Professor Vishwanathan. 95% uh, of the work happened during his time. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Professor Matthew. I now request Sri Neeraj Bajaji to please say a few words. <coughs> uh, Chief Guest, Dr. Mashirkar, Director, Professor Subhashi Chaudhary, former Director, Professor Ashok Mishra, and the distinguished guests. Thank you, Professor Chaudhary, for inviting our family. Having so many family members present here today on such an auspicious occasion just shows what Rahul Bhai meant to all of us. All of us are just so fortunate to have him as the head of the family and head of the Bajaj group for so many decades. Really appreciate your thoughtfulness for this inauguration on 10th June. As you mentioned, it's Rahul Bhai's birth anniversary. Actually, there are twin celebrations today. One is, of course, this, and so many Bajaj family members are here, as you can see. The other is in Pune, and Rajiv, Sanjeev, and Rajiv's wife Deepa and son Rishabh are in Pune. Today is the inauguration at Akurdi of the new Chetak Technology Limited Integrated Center of Excellence, where the electric Chetak scooter will roll out 
from the same location from where the iconic Chetak rolled out many decades back. Uh, sir, you could not have chosen a more respected and appropriate chief guest than Dr. Mashilkar. We are honored by his presence. Rahul Bhai had the highest respect and regard for him. May I on behalf of the Bajaj family convey our heartiest compliments to IIT Bombay and its team for building such an iconic technology innovation center, which we saw uh, the presentation just now, and we will, of course, uh, see it uh, in real life in, in a few moments. Sri Rahul Bajaj's dream of establishing a state-of-the-art research and innovation facility for igniting the minds of budding students and for the benefit of society at large has come true. Innovation, entrepreneurship, and R&D were always close to his heart. We are very happy to note that the combined synergy between SINE, IRCC, and IDC under the aegis of the Rahul Bajaj Technology Innovation Center will generate huge intellectual capital. May I share a secret and little bit add to what Mr. Mishra mentioned. If he may recall, during the period when Rahul Bhai was chairman of the Board of Governors, that is between 2003 and 2006, Mr. Mishra suggested to me, he spoke to me that, you know, find a way of reaching out to Rahul Bhai and trying to convince him to get Rahul Bhai's acceptance for naming the center after him because I don't know why he felt that way that he said if I ask Rahul Bhai, Rahul Bhai will say no. So maybe he had some wrong notion that if he tells me and I speak to Rahul Bhai, there's some chance, some chance of success. But that was obviously his wrong notion because I did speak to Rahul Bhai to accept the naming of the center after him. And as I expected, he refused. <laughs> so then the real secret is that then Professor Mishra, myself, some Bajaj family members, I won't name them, but they are here in the audience today. We actually maybe jointly colluded, if that's the right word I can use. And finally, finally, with a lot of effort, succeeded in convincing him. So, uh, uh, so that is the real story, uh, what Mr. Mishra uh, did not give some of the, uh, the details. Earlier, Rahul Bhai had established, as was mentioned, four chair professorships, so which are still going on, and some of those professors are here today uh, with us. Uh, we are extremely happy that Dr. Mashilkar has released the book IBIS. It's a short form for IIT Bombay's Ideas and Innovations for Society. My compliments to Dean R&D, Dr. Milind Atre, Associate Dean Professor Bandarkar, and all the researchers for putting in huge efforts for compilation of more than 100 technologies, as we heard earlier, ideas and innovations, and consisting in many, many crucial technology areas. All these technologies have very high potential for commercial exploitation. My compliments to IIT Bombay for showcasing its major technologies and greatly contributing in making our country Atmanirbhar. Our heartiest congratulations to Director Professor Chaudhary, Professor Kakkar, Professor Mishra, Professor Vishwanadham, Professor Swaj Joshi, Professor Tom Matthew, 
Professor Ravi Gudi, Principal Architect Brinda Somaya and the team, CPWD team, Contractor Paranika and all those who have worked so hard in conceptualizing and completion of the project. Special mention of Mr. Sham Maniar, an IIT Bombay alumnus, and now, of course, a crucial part of the Jamnal Bajaj Foundation. It's a, it's a matter of pride to note that your institute has been selected as an institute of eminence by Government of India. Your institution has also joined ranks of various world-renowned institu institutions in the AI Horizons Network to push the frontiers of artificial intelligence research further. Future belongs to the young. Our best wishes to them and to the Rahul Bajaj Technology Innovation Center, which will support them. Once again, our most humble gratitude from the Bajaj family to IIT Bombay for honoring Pooja Rahul Bajaj ji by naming this center after him. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I now request our chief guest, Dr. Mashilkar, to please say a few words. Professor Shubhasis Chaudhary, Professor Ashok Mishra, Mrs. Suman Jain, Mr. Shekhar Bajaj, Mr. Madhur Bajaj, Mr. Neeraj Bajaj. Amazing three generations of Bajaj family that we see in the audience uh, uh, today, paying our respects to revered uh, Rahul Bhai, distinguished deans, faculty of IIT Bombay, and also IIT Bombay Monash Research Academy, I see many of you here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I want to extend a very warm welcome to you all for the inauguration of uh, Rahul Bajaj Technology Innovation Center. I would put it as an institution named after an institution. Rahul Bhai was not an individual. <laughs> he was an institution. And I remember when he left us for his Heaven Day abroad, exactly 118 days ago, 12 February, I had tweeted by saying that he's a institution, individuals go, institutions remain. So Rahul Bhai is no more, but for us, he's everywhere. <laughs> this institution will also live forever. It will go because its roots are firm. Not only it is created in the name of uh, Rahul Bhai, but it is created in one of our most premier institution, IIT Bombay, a leader among the leading institutions. That is how I will put it, basically. You know, great institutions, academic institutions in particular, they do education, research and innovation. Education is disseminating known knowledge. Research is creating new knowledge. And innovation is converting knowledge into wealth and social good. And we at IIT Bombay, and I use the word we deliberately, I'm part of this family for a long time, we do it extraordinarily well. So I'm quite sure the roots are very firm and the trunk is going to be even stronger and it will do the nation proud. For me personally, I consider this as a very, very special day in my life. So it was very thoughtful of uh, you to gather us all together and make those introductions. And when I had to introduce myself, 
I would repeat what I said. I said, I am Raghunath Mashilkar, the luckiest man on the face of this earth today. Because looking at the Bajaj family, the reverence and respect in which the nation holds them, they could have got a President of India or a Prime Minister of India. They thought of me. I truly, truly feel humbled. So I'm most grateful to the Bajaj family. A few words about uh, Rahul Bhai would be in order. You know, I came back to India in 1976, I remember, and the name Pune was synonymous with Bajaj. And I looked at him, the towering figure, admired him. But I got uh, to know him better in 1995, I must say, because I started working with him. The then Prime Minister Nasir Rao and Chancellor Kohl of Germany had created what was uh, called as the Indo-German Consultivity Committee. There were individual members from different sectors of life, and both Rahul Bhai and I were members of that. The meetings used to be held in Delhi and then one in Bonn, and the deliberations uh, uh, where nobody else was privy to that, excepting for the Prime Minister, a three-page note used to go at the end. And I saw Rahul Bhai in action. His courage personified. And I still remember the Germans held him in awe, as a matter of fact. He was awe inspiring. And he is one who always said what he meant and meant what he said and made a huge impact. And that's what he has done all his life, whether it is World Economic Forum, whether it is CII, presidentship, and so on and so forth. Courage personified. That is one aspect of his life. The other side of his personality, I understand uh, his excellent upbringing. Uh, it shaped uh, his outlook on life, business, as well as uh, the family values. As you know, his grandfather, Jamnalal Bajajji, was among Gandhiji's uh, uh, earliest colleagues. His father, Kamalan Bajaj, followed suit and lived in Varda Ashram much of his life, and his mother, Savitri, was active in the freedom struggle. So, Rahul Bhai imbibed those Gandhian values, Gandhian ethics of truth, of austerity, of honesty, of kindness, and respect for others, along with an overall sense of duty, which has transmitted to his children, Rajiv, Sanjeev, Sunaina, and I can see that they are transmitting it to their children. That's what Rahul Bhai. And you know, his, this uh, part of his personality with empathy, uh, with ethics, uh, with these values, I witnessed again and again in different ways. Uh, you know, th there was another overwhelming moment in my life when uh, revered Chandrasekhar Dharmadikari ji passed away and he was the chairman of uh, the advisory council of uh, Jamnal Bajaj uh, uh, Foundation and uh, uh, he requested me to sort of take it over. It was uh, incredible. I, I couldn't imagine myself sitting in that particular chair. But I was associated with Jamnal Bajaj Foundation, the awards committees for almost more than two decades as a matter of fact. And I witnessed uh, uh, his uh, sort of passion about uh, uh, these values. But I want to tell you another uh, story. And I have tweeted about it. I don't know how many of you are uh, tweeters. At 4.30 in the morning, I have tweeted it, basically. It has to do with an incident. What happened was that we have this Indian Institute of Science Education Research, ISER, Pune, right? And I remember their director and other colleagues approaching me one day, and they posed an interesting problem. They said, of course, it's very competitive. Like IITs, it's very tough to get into ISIS because there are competitive national exams. And they said that uh, when it uh, uh, comes to girls, for example, some of the girls from tier three cities, villages originally, tier two cities, et cetera, et cetera, their parents refuse to send them to Pune because they are scared in terms of their living alone, this, that, and the other, et cetera. And therefore, there was this idea of a hostel, just exclusively for these. 
the cost was 50 crore. And then we thought of who could help us. The first name that came to my mind was Rahul Bhai. And I remember calling him personally, and I'm not exaggerating. As soon as I explained the cause to him, because the cause is that of inclusion, because otherwise those girls would be excluded, basically, it took him 50 seconds to say yes. So that compassion, <laughs> that empathy, and you know, uh, it is uh, interesting by the way, I also tweeted today the photograph of uh, the stone that was laid there. It says, inaugurated by Raghunath A. Mashilkar in the presence of Sri Rahul Bajaj, 11 January 2020, right? So this is a double privilege to do that, and I do it with mixed feelings, because Rahul Bhai is no more. But the happy part of it is that his name, and I'm very glad that you could persuade him, because I know he cannot be persuaded basically. I know that. And you did a great job, so congratulations to you. That name uh, is getting associated, so that gives me a very, very uh, sort of special page. I must uh, make a few comments. They have given me 20 minutes, by the way. I'm not going to speak for 20 minutes. But I do want to make a few points making use of uh, this forum, because I see a lot of young people also around. I uh, saw the book uh, IT uh, Bombay's Ideas uh, and Innovation for Society, by the way. And I had a preview of it, not on the dais, yesterday night at midnight. I went through page by page. And I'm actually amazed. I'm actually amazed about the intellectual prowess, not surprised, but the way it gets reflected in diverse uh, areas from AI to ML to blockchain to uh, robotics to flexible electronics to green energy and so on and so forth. So it is incredible. We have a powerhouse here, basically. But the challenge is, how do we move from ideas to impact? The technology readiness level that the industry looks for is TRL 9. They will compromise for TRL 8. Very rarely go for TRL 7. And bulk of the time, we are at TRL 1, 2, 3. And therefore, there is a big uh, value of death, so as to say, in between. How do we meet it? And that is where the challenge comes. That is not your responsibility. It is the responsibility of all of us to create that ecosystem by which that gap is uh, left. Indian ideas must create wealth in India. All right? And how do we actually do that? That is the challenge. I must also tell you about the success rate, by the way, of any new idea. New idea. I'm talking about really new idea, not derivative idea. There's a paper in Stephen, by Stephen and Burnley in 1997 for Industrial Research uh, Institute, and it describes with deep research the significant odds that will be faced by would-be innovators by uh, uh, analyzing consistent data from uh, new product development and there, for example, they show a universal curve, by the way, where the substantial new product ideas, if there are 3,000 raw ideas on piece of paper, 300 are submitted, lead to 125 uh, 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 small projects, nine uh, significant uh, developments, four major developments finally, and 1.7 products in the marketplace. <laughs> All right? But this is for truly new ideas. I'm talking about not derivative idea. And therefore, how do we change that? What I would like to sort of uh, propose, the problem of getting me here is uh, that I'm a dangerous optimist, <laughs> all right? And dangerous optimist about the Indian talent and Indian promise. We must prove this Stephen Burnley or wrong and how we can achieve sort of a greater success. For this, we must also focus right. Our objectives must be right. And those objectives, this wonderful book, Rahul Bajaj, An Extraordinary Life, this is an extraordinary story, by the way, very, very inspiring. You must all sort of read that. And the back page, and I will just read out to you, it says, uh, we forced competition head on. We faced competition head on 
and I concentrated on three things. I said, I must have volume, the lowest cost, and the best quality. It is very simple. There is nothing intelligent so, uh, in that. You don't need to go to Harvard to learn that. If you don't have these three things, you are in trouble. Others failed to do so, and they could not compete with us on quality or price. Best quality would include the latest cutting edge technology, and that is what I constantly did. I needed scale for both, so I kept on going to Delhi for getting approvals for expansion. Those days we had to go to Delhi to get uh, sort of uh, promotion. But this tells you about something. He talks about affordability on one hand and excellence on the other hand. And normally affordable excellence is a contradiction in terms. What is affordable can't be excellent. What is excellent can't be affordable. But it can be done. And that's what he actually uh, basically uh, showed. And uh, some of you will remember that on 9th August 2014, you were kind enough to ask me to give a convocation address. And the title of my convocation address at that time was Affordable Excellence, the Game Changer. All right? And that is Raoul Bai's philosophy. So therefore, our innovation focus, and that's what India needs. That's what India needs. Our people deserve the best quality at the lowest price. So we have to be 10x in terms of our thinking. 10 times better, but 10 times uh, sort of cheaper. There is an ecosystem that we will require whenever you dare, you know, and that is where this talent, technology, and trust comes into play. We have talent all around. We have access to technology now. We develop technology. The trust. And trust comes in various forms. I'll give you an instance. You know, in my mother's name, I have created what is called as Anjani Shelkar Inclusive Innovation Award. We do not give it to best practice. We give it to next practice. I'm not a great believer in best practice. Best practice means you are following somebody. It should be next practice where others are following you. That's number one. And inclusive innovation. Sarva Samaveshak, as we like to sort of call it. One of the awards went to Navin Khanna. He had created... Uh, this uh, dengue test. I hope none of you had dengue, but if you had, you will uh, remember that it will take one or two days to uh, get the test. He had done it in such a way that in within 15 minutes you know whether you have it or not and at what stage. It was US FDA approved, it had US patents, but nobody would take it. Why? Because we are dependent upon import from uh, Australia, from South Korea and US. And then one day what happened, by the way, was there was a pandemic. And we ran out of kits. So what do you do? So we rushed to these countries. We had our own, but we rushed to these countries. Only South Korea said we will supply. The others could not in the time limit. So they said, fine. They ordered. South Korea loaded them on the ship, and they loaded it on the wrong ship, so it went to Africa. So country was left with no kids, All right. and there was no option but to go for Navin Khanna's. Navin Khanna's market share at that time was close to 5% or 6%. Today it is 80% plus. If the ships had come to India, it would have been still close to 5 to 6%. The point is, we have to trust our technology, our people, our young people who are generating these outstanding uh, technologies. I remember a joke, by the way, uh, R.K. Lakshman's cartoon. There is an eye doctor, and he's removing a particle uh, from the eye of a patient. And he said, uh, sir, should I take it out? I'm asking because this is a foreign particle. <laughs> I think. That is actually fundamental. But I'm seeing a change, by the way. I'm seeing a particular change which I want to emphasize. I've been the chairman of this National Innovation Foundation, Grassroots Innovation, uh, as you know, for almost 18 years. I just stepped down a couple of years ago. And this is based on the fact that everyone is someone. 
Minds on margin are not marginal minds. Everybody can generate ideas, right? Grassroots innovation, as we call it. And we are doing an interview for chief innovation officer. And somebody gave me his uh, CV, the, uh, one of the candidates. So I saw he claimed expert in, uh, expertise in branding. I said, great. Uh, can you tell me how we can brand our India? So he was surprised because he has branded a refrigerator, he has branded a car. How do you brand a nation like India? I said, I will give you a hint. India is a land of ideas. You know? And then, uh, sorry, in fact, it was the other way around. Uh, uh, India is a land of ideas is what he said. And the challenge, however, is that the U.S. is the land of opportunity. You, you, you get the point. And therefore, how do we make our land a land of opportunity? That becomes sort of a challenge. That is where this book comes from, for creating those opportunities. And that is changing now. India is becoming a land of opportunity. You know, uh, I was um, in Monash University uh, as Sir Louis Matheson District Professor. And uh, I gave some public lectures, and the first one was post-pandemic uh, uh, technology dynamism in terms of digitalization, uh, decarbonization, uh, uh, and uh, democratization, and so on. And I very proudly mentioned something, which I'll mention here. I said, just guess, in 2021, what did India do every week? And I said, we created one unicorn every week. Approximately, 42 in 2021, not exactly 52, but 42. And it's a matter of great pride that when we uh, reached 100 uh, sort of a few days ago, a few weeks ago, I had done an analysis when we were only 55, by the way, not 100. I wondered whether they came from institutions like IITs, IIMs, or did they come from somewhere else also? I was so happy to see more, around 50% of them came from Tier 3 cities, Tier 2 cities. Can you just imagine now? A 27, 28 year old from Satara, Sangli, Karad, Nasik, etc., not Mumbai and Pune, actually having a market cap of a sort of a billion dollars. That is democratization wealth. So I think there are great opportunities that are coming up. Uh, in um, sort of uh, uh, new uh, uh, India. The last point I would like to make is, uh, as far as our center is covered, our institution is concerned, it has to have Rahul Baja spirit. That of courage, courage of conviction, innovation, of compassion, of uh, passion. And there, I again recall this spirit that uh, we had talked about in our book, Leapfrogging to Pole Vaulting. You know, why does the frog leap? He leaps because he's afraid of the predators and jumps a few feet to safety. Uh, should we be doing that or should we pole vault? The size of the pole is the size of our aspiration, basically. And uh, we can do that and we can create radical transformations as some of which we have seen uh, sort of in India. I think that has to be a part uh, of our going forward. But there somebody had asked me, Are Baba, you are pole vaulting. How do you make sure you don't break your back? So chapter three of the book actually describes how it went then and they, it gives an assured framework for assured success. And what is that assured? Affordable, scalable, sustainable, user-friendly, rapid in terms of the speed with which we move from mine to marketplace, or then excellence in terms of technology, cutting edge technology like Rahul Bhai says, and finally D, distinctive, all right? And we have done the analysis and shown, for example, how critical this matrix is. We, when we talk about affordable excellence, and I saw a lot of examples of affordable excellence, particularly in healthcare, the point of care examples that we have said, that is just two parts out of the seven. How do you make the affordable as well as excellence meet with the all other uh, sort of, uh, including user friendliness and uh, being distinctive. The IP, for example, the intellectual property that we create 
is robust and cannot be just uh, sort of bypassed. I used to talk about patent literacy, as you know, I was crazy. People used to call me patent care, and at that time I talked about patent literacy. You write patents in, uh, uh, I mean, uh, you read patents in such a way that you can bypass them, but write patents in such a way nobody can bypass you. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So that assured matrix in our book shows, as a matter of fact, companies which are very successful at a point in time have not remained successful. So we like to see this particular center proving Stephen Burney law wrong, and by using this assured success, by using these particular parameters, uh, creating something that is uh, sort of uh, robust. Let me just recollect finally before closing, uh, Rahul Bhai's uh, quote, uh, he says, integrity and character matter. Without them, no amount of ability can get you anywhere. In addition, you need courage, courage to make difficult decisions and courage to oppose something if uh, your conscience tells you that you are right. I hope that spirit will <laughs> will uh, prevail in this uh, uh, center uh, for uh, ages to uh, uh, come. Uh, I'd like to end by just being a little personal. My last 24 hours have been very interesting. Uh, I was in Mumbai. Uh, there is this Tata Affirmative Action Program where they look at Shivul Kaash, Shivul Tribe, the poorest of the poor and help them. And I've been the chairman of the governing council for the last 12 years, I'm from 2012, all right? That was interesting because that showed one part face of India. You know, as you, uh, you all know, I was born in a very poor family uh, in a village called Mashail. And my mother brought me to Mumbai when I lost my father at six. And she did manual work to bring me up. Two meals a day was a challenge. I studied under street lights, walked barefoot until I was 12. In SSC, I had stood 11th among 135,000 students, but I was going to leave school. And then came Tata scholarship of 60 rupees per month. That's how I'm standing and talking to you. And the same uh, student who got that scholarship became the chairman of their Tata Affirmative Action Program and continues for a decade. <laughs> so that is one part of uh, 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 sort of the story of emerging India. Yesterday, I was uh, chief guest for the Parle Tilak uh, Vidyalay Centenary, by the way. An amazing institution, by the way. Once again, brought out uh, by individuals, uh, and from four students, it has grown to 26,000 students. And uh, uh, remarkable sort of balance. This, you know, not just Nana Savardhan, Buddhi Savardhan, Vyakti Savardhan, uh, Vichar uh, Savardhan, Samata Savardhan, uh, Arogya Savardhan, Mulya Savardhan, Netrutu Savardhan, and the way they have sort of moved is incredible. So that is one part of India which is generating the leaders of the future. And this is the third part of India that I'm witness to today, where aspiring young people you know, are setting the world on fire. Let me end by telling you about aspiration uh, of the young people of today. And that gives us the responsibility, by the way. I was with some young people, I try to be with them because I feel young. And uh, uh, I I'm very proud of our educational system, by the way. I'm a roving ambassador for India everywhere, and particularly education system. And I said, look, uh, we have created uh, Satya Nadella, who is the CEO of Microsoft. Uh, Sundar Pichai, CEO of uh, Google, and so on and so forth. You can be that too. You know, Subhashis, one young fellow got up and said, uh, sir, you don't know uh, what is in our mind. I'm sorry, you're mysterious. I said, why? I thought I said something nice. He said, no. Your generation, your only objective was to go to U.S. somehow. The next generation, go to U.S. and get a great job, maybe in Microsoft, somehow. The next generation, go to U.S., go to Microsoft, 
and become CEO of uh, uh, Microsoft, not our generation. We want to create our own Microsoft, our own Google here in our India. So it is that aspiration, ladies and gentlemen, that we hope this institution will uh, uh, so, uh, sort of build. But at the same time, again, Rahul buys innovation, compassion, and passion. Whereas you innovate to become rich, don't forget the downtrodden and those technologies that you have created of affordable excellence, not only affordable excellence, extremely affordable excellence, which a common man can afford. I hope this center will do us the nation and the memory of legendary Rahul Bhai proud. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for your inspiring words. I now request Dean Alumni and Corporate Relations, Professor Ravinder Gudi, to kindly join us on the dais. Sir will present the vote of thanks. Uh, I just want to mention, uh, after the vote of thanks, I request all the guests present here today to kindly join us at the new adjacent RBTIC building for the formal ribbon cutting and plaque unveiling. We will also be uh, requesting you all to join us for refreshments time. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, respected uh, chief guest, uh, Professor Mashelkar, Professor Chaudhary, uh, Shri Neeraj Bajaj, uh, Professor Mishra, um, distinguished invitees, uh, colleagues, friends. It's indeed my very pleasant responsibility to propose a vote of thanks on this very august occasion. Uh, firstly, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the distinguished Bajaj family and the Bajaj Foundation for this very generous contribution towards the new center, the RBTIC. Uh, I must say that uh, IIT Bombay strongly rhymes with Buland Bharat ki Buland Tasveer Hamara Bajaj. IIT Bombay would certainly go several steps towards reinforcing this slogan and being a fountainhead of innovations and translations. Uh, so thanks very much for, to the Bajaj Foundation and the entire Bajaj family, the distinguished Bajaj family for being here with us and sharing these moments of joy. Uh, I also take this opportunity to convey our sincere gratitude uh, to our chief guest, uh, Professor Mashelkar, who kindly accepted to be the chief guest for today's event. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for taking your time, spending time with us, and your very, very inspiring words. I'm sure this will be... Uh, very, uh, these words will really inspire our entire uh, younger generation as they go ahead in not only uh, creating employment but in reinforcing the Buland Bharat, Buland Tasveer slogan. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, the faculty members of IIT Bombay, our director, Professor Chaudhary, uh, current and former Dean uh, IPS, Professor Vishwanathan, and Professor Tom Matthews, uh, Dean Research and Development, Professor Milind Atre, uh, and Professor Upendra Bhandarkar. Uh, I would also like to thank the respective teams for their presence and the kind involvement in today's event. Uh, I would like to thank Professor Ashok Mishra for kindly gracing the occasion and being present with us. I think the seeds, seed planting happened really during your tenure in, under your STR and guidance. Uh, I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the architects, Somaya and Kalappa, the contractors, Parnika, and the CPWD for their very uh, intense involvement in bringing the center up. As has already been said, uh, I would like to thank our very uh, close alumnus who assiduously worked on this project in the background. He almost came twice a week over the last several years when this center was coming up. Mr. Sham Manier, thank you so much. No, he was not intrusive at all. In fact, he was a very pleasant Whenever he came here, he was a very, very, very uh, pleasant guest to us. But more important than the guest, he was a very strong participator as this center came up. So thank you very much, Mr. Shamanir, for this, this help. Uh, 
like to also express uh, my sincere thanks to Dr. Aditi Vaidya and our very own Professor A.B. Inamdar. Is he in the audience here? Um, he's been kind enough to uh, bring up a very nice uh, art and creativity which we will soon get to witness in the plaque. Thank you very much for your contributions. I extend a special thanks uh, to everyone who curated today's inaugural ceremony and made it very successful and memorable. Uh, my colleagues, uh, uh, the deputy directors, uh, director's office, the, the registrar, the registrar's office, guest house, uh, Mr. Dabolkar ji, computer center, CD, the security section, the uh, PRO, the public health office, state office, and the EMC. Thank you very much. Your efforts are truly appreciated. Lastly, I thank all of you, uh, distinguished colleagues, for your presence today. And as Ms. Falguni, our PRO, said, we will now proceed to the uh, venue of the inauguration. Thank you very much. <laughs>